Good afternoon, everybody. Happy Wednesday, nice sunny day out there. Uh, thank you for joining us this afternoon. We're going to talk about COVID and we're gonna talk about vaccinations and then we're gonna talk about whatever's on your mind, whatever questions you might have. So um, let me begin by talking about the COVID numbers. COVID numbers continue to look good. Um, fingers crossed that continues. Let me give you a few of those numbers. Yesterday, in the city of St. Louis, we only reported 14 new cases. The day before, it was eight. That probably reflects, uh, you know, some over the weekend activity. Uh, and then, what day was it? Saturday, there were 34. So the numbers are, are uh, jumping around a bit, but having a day with eight and a day with 14 is encouraging. Our seven-day average for new cases per day is now 22 people in the city of St. Louis. Um, so, so that's good, and that, that gives us a rate per 100 people of seven people per 100, just, just over seven per 100. And, you know, frankly, that compares with um, others in the area of, let's see here, we were at seven, the state of Missouri, at seven per 100,000. The state of Missouri was at 11 per 100,000. St. Louis County is at 15, St. Charles is at seven. Jefferson is at 22 per 100,000 and Franklin's at 10. Uh, so, you know, we continue to uh, have low COVID numbers in, in the region. Um, what else did I want to tell you about on that? Um, let's talk about hospitals for a second. I think that's the important things about new cases. Hospitalizations. Um, today, and these numbers always lag by two days. So today uh, we're reporting 363 people in the hospital that are e either COVID positive or suspected of being positive. 363. Uh, if you look back to say January 23rd, we reported 632. So you can see uh, that that the number is going down significantly and just um, for comparison purposes if you look back to 60 days ago to December 23rd so right before Christmas there were 956 people in the hospital so in the last 60 days we have 600 people in round numbers fewer in the hospital uh, in our region, the four major hospital systems, than we did just 60 days ago. So, so that's good news. Now, there are still a fair number of people that are in the ICU. Uh, 81 of the 363 people are in the ICU, and of those 81, 54 are on ventilators. Uh, that's still a lot of people that are pretty sick with COVID. Um, but the good news is from two months ago, we're down 600 people in the hospital, rounded off. Uh, patients admitted to the hospital, we are running an average of about 44, seven day average, 44 people a day are being ad newly admitted to the hospital. So um, much, much better numbers. Let me, I'm gonna look back while I'm here the seven day average for people being admitted to the hospital 60 days ago on December 23rd, 118, 119, really round that up. 119 today, it's 44. So um, much better, that's because uh, the case counts down, positivity rate is down in the city of St. Louis, it's down to around 5%. Uh, it is, uh, not that low in the region, but it's still much less than it was. So those are the COVID numbers for today. I would just say this, there's a combination of things happening, we think. One, when the numbers were so terribly high from Thanksgiving to New Year's or a little after that, 
uh, I think a lot of people realized that they needed to get serious about the mitigation strategies. And you know, that's the mask wearing, that is social distancing, hand washing, um, all of those things when people got serious about uh, complying with those recommendations, we began to see our cases go down. Now, I will say this, and I always have to say this, in the city of St. Louis, from the beginning, our residents and our businesses have done an excellent job. Our numbers have consistently been lower than any place else in the region, but the region matters uh, because that imaginary line out there a little bit west of Skinker uh, is just that. It's an imaginary line. And so when people across the area and throughout the state even began getting serious about wearing their mask uh, when the numbers were so high, we began to see those things go down. The other thing, of course, is that um, in early January <clears throat> is when we began having some hope, having better hope for the vaccinations. And as you all know, we have uh, there's still a very limited supply, but the supply is getting better. It's our, uh, our doses are coming more consistently, and we just had a pandemic task force call yesterday. Everybody believes that the number of doses that are available are going to continue to go up. They're, the state's going to get more. When the state gets more, we get more. St. Louis County gets more. The hospitals get more. Uh, not enough yet, but I think, you know, we're, when we're talking about this a month from now, um, there'll be a much better supply of vaccinations. And I know those of you that have not been vaccinated yet, which is the vast majority of people, it is frustrating that you haven't been able to get the vaccination. We have been consistently vaccinating people over this past weekend. We vaccinated 5,000 people in the city of St. Louis. Uh, and most of those were second doses, not all of them, all but about 500 were second doses. So, and we are continuing to vaccinate folks. Uh, we actually are doing some vaccinations now. Those are, uh, this is by invitation only. It's always by invitation only. Um, and, and the invitations go out to uh, some of these are second, second, second vaccinations who missed last weekend. So, uh, some of you may have also gotten uh, an email or a text message. If you signed up on our registration list, which has close to 60,000 people on it by now, but if you signed up and you signed up early on that list, we are working off that list and about uh, 2,200, 2,300 people uh, did receive an invitation to sign up for an appointment on Saturday. Uh, we are doing that event uh, north, and we're doing another event next weekend south, and so we're trying to send those invitations to people who live in that, in that close by area. So we will continue to do vaccinations. Um, and, and I'm sorry, you can't just show up and get the vaccination, um, you know, because that's just a, <clears throat> you know, it, just so many people showing up can't be managed, so it is by invitation only. But we will continue to do that, and we are continuing, um, and I, I hope within a week or so, we'll be able to uh, announce that you can get vaccinations at CVS and or Walgreens. Walgreens is doing a few now, so for those of you, um, you can check with Walgreens every day uh, on their website because they do have a few doses, uh, and we're hopeful that CVS will, will have some doses as well. These are doses that are left over from those that were earmarked for nursing homes. So, you know, what happens in this situation is you set aside, the state set aside a number for both people who are in nursing homes and people who work in nursing homes, but they don't all take advantage of the opportunity. And so then there were some remaining doses and uh, we're hopeful that those doses were gonna be able to get in arms pretty soon. So that's, that's the good news, semi-good news about vaccinations. Um, it is a little chaotic in terms of having so many lists. That's not something that, you know, we are in charge of. The state has a list, the county has a list, BJC, SSM, Mercy, everybody has a list. Uh, the hospitals uh, that are on the pandemic task force were um, <clears throat> 
starting they, to vaccinate everybody 75 and over. over. Some of them are now down to, to 72, 70, I've heard. Some even are at, at 65. So, um, you know, the folks that are available right now, most of the first responders have been done in our region, police, fire, EMS. Um, the healthcare workers are done in our region. So folks who work in hospitals or, or related healthcare uh, systems. Uh, and so now the tier that we're working very hard to vaccinate are people 65 and older or people 18 to 64 who have underlying serious underlying health conditions. There are many, many of the people that are over 65. In the state, it's about two and a half million people. We think in the city of St. Louis alone, that's probably close to 80,000 people. The people that are over 65, we know there's about 43,000 of them. And then we're making an estimate for how many people that are 18 to 64 who may have the qualifying underlying health conditions. So it is a lot of people. Uh, and to get through that tier and to be able to move on to the next tier, which is essential workers, uh, we're gonna have to have a lot more vaccinate, vaccine supply. And we do foresee that coming. You may know that just today, the FDA said, um, that the Johnson and Johnson vaccine meets the requirements and that it's shown to be safe and effective. Now, the formal vote for that happens at the end of this week, Friday or Saturday. There's a committee that formally votes for that, but there was a press release from the FDA uh, that, that they felt that the Johnson and Johnson vaccine met the requirements for emergency authorization. Um, that I think is going to be a real game changer if we can get s enough supply of it. And the reason it's going to be a game changer is it's one shot. Um, you know that the Pfizer vaccine and the Moderna vaccine, which is what we're vaccinating now, both require two shots. And Pfizer is one shot and three weeks later uh, you get the second shot and it has to be stored at extreme cold temperatures minus 90, I think it is, but you know, nothing that any of us have. Uh, the city has one freezer, holds 9,000 doses. It's located at Affinia, and we are using that when we get the vaccine to keep it stored ultra cold. The Moderna vaccine, you get one shot, and then four weeks later, you get your second shot. Uh, and it's stored at cold temperatures, but not as cold as Pfizer. And then the Johnson & Johnson, I'm told, can be uh, stored at sort of normal refrigerator temperatures. Uh, and it's one shot. So as you can see, this is all happen happening rapidly. I know it's not rapidly enough for many of you uh, who are, are very anxious to get the vac vaccination, and, and I understand that. But it is happening rapidly. So stick with us here. Continue with your mask wearing social distancing, hand washing, uh, because, you know, you, you probably know this, but there's like almost no cases of flu this year because these are good procedures on any day to keep you from catching a bug. So um, I think that's all I have right this minute with regard to COVID and with regard to vaccinations, but I'm going to bet there's some questions. Couple of questions. So, first question is from Jeff Mayer. A lot of people are vaccinating in the city. The city, hospitals, pharmacies, federally qualified health centers. Is there any centralized location where that is tracked based on who is vaccinating in the city? Well, the state has a website which will show you. The state's also doing mass vaccination events, but I don't believe there is a centralized. Uh, website for who's hap doing what on what day but the state may have that we could actually look that up and and um people are you know for example bjc ssm st luke's and mercy of course if you're signed up on their list they're going to email you and um so it's not a, the kind of thing where you can just show up and, and get the vaccination now the mat the state's mass vaccination events are uh more open but you still do have to be in phase 1B tier 2, which is over 65 or under 65 with an underlying health condition. 
Uh, Todd's question, is it true that the mayor does not have control over the number of doses the city receives, which has been extremely limited? It is true that I don't have control over the number of doses this, the city re receives, nor does Sam Page have control over the number that the county receives. Uh, but here's what is happening. We have worked with the state uh, to, to get uh, our share of the vaccine. And uh, it, it goes to the hospitals a week ago, maybe it's a week and a half ago now, the hospital's got 30,000 doses. Um, it goes to the federally qualified health centers. Um, that actually goes directly to them. It's going to local health agencies. Um, and it is split up based on population. So there's 4,000 doses a, a week from the state that are going to a 12 county uh, region. It's Troop C, Highway Patrol Troop C, 12 county region to split up among the local public health agencies. And the only exception to that is St. Louis County who has uh, carved out of that. Excuse me. Okay. Uh, so. A couple of viewers uh, have mentioned that they are a 65 or older and that they have some of the underlying qualifying health conditions. Curious about when the, uh, the city will be able to send them notifications about vaccination opportunities. So it really depends on where you, how quickly you signed up on the list. If you're on the city's list, we are taking it uh, in the order that you signed up. So the person that signed up first, second, third, <clears throat> they've likely already received notification. Uh, but as I said, we have close to 60,000 people on that list. Uh, you know, 50,000, 40 something thousand are city residents. And so uh, it depends on where you are on that list. Question from Rhonda about sign-up. Uh, so at the Walmart locations, do you have to register on individual location websites? Or if you sign up for the state's navigation website, <coughs> does that get you in everywhere? No. <clears throat> you have to go to the, Wal the Walmart or Walgreens, what Walmart. you say? You have to go to the Walmart <clears throat> website to see where there's a vaccine available and sign up for an appointment. Uh, we did have a couple of folks who've asked about the lowering case rates. Um, and in general, questions have to do with, will we rescind a mask mandate? Will bars and restaurants get to open past 11 p.m.? And will we stop testing uh, youth sports and lift some of those restrictions? What was the first one? Ma <coughs> Masks, bars, restaurants, gotcha. uh, testing youth sports. We will not be... <coughs> We're sending the mask mandate. Um, it's recommended that you continue to wear a mask even after you get the vaccination. <clears throat> Bars and restaurants, at some point, <clears throat> not today, we will ease the restrictions on bars and restaurants. And then the third thing was... Testing of use sports. Um, all, of the, all of those regulations we are taking a look at. The testing of youth sports is required for <clears throat> team play, intramural team, not intramural, but inner team play. So we expect that, uh, at, <coughs> excuse me, we expect that at some point that will be uh, changed. Those are the COVID related questions we have. We have other sort of public safety <coughs> questions that have been submitted first. Jackie asked, uh, with the lifting of residency over the summer, what's the status of bringing more officers on board at SLPD? Well, Jackie, thanks for that question. Um, as most of you know, our police department, <clears throat> for, for since about 2013, so what is that, seven years now, going on eight, um, we have been short <clears throat> police officers based on our table of organization. So for, and, and one of the things that, of course, was an impediment to both <clears throat> hiring, recruiting, and retaining officers was our residency requirement. St. Louis City is a great place to live. I live there, and many of you live, live here also. But when we were trying to hire 
uh, for folks who said <clears throat> maybe they live in University City or maybe they live in Afton or live outside of the city limits, that was a limiting factor for our pool. <clears throat> so um, there's, in, and hopefully you've noticed this, uh, it's both on social media, it's on TV, it's in print. Um, there's a major recruiting campaign going on right now to hire additional police officers. There is no longer a residency requirement, so <clears throat> if you live in North County or South County or um, in the region uh, within an hour of St. Louis, <clears throat> is uh, there's no longer a residency requirement, so we would welcome you to apply for the St. Louis City Police Department. Uh, very good department, good benefits. You know, part of the, um, we'll, we'll post a link to, uh, to that on our, on our Facebook here so that you, uh, you can see that, or we'll repost one of the, uh, one of the ads, and there are a number of them. <clears throat> and it's, you know, be the change you want to see. And um, so if you know of a young person um, who thinks they might want to be a police officer, please apply. There are uh, openings for police officer. There are openings for dispatchers. Uh, we also run a cadet program for any um, young person who's 18 to 21. You can't go to the police academy until you're 21. But if you're 18 to 21, <clears throat> you can join the police academy and get, a, you know, we've been um, at our vaccination events, in fact, we've been having the cadets work the vaccination event, help people as they come in, direct people, answer questions, all those kinds of things. So we are running a uh, thanks to the Police Foundation, uh, which is a, a group of folks who contribute to the foundation who do many great things for the police department, but they helped us develop a very uh, uh, robust recruiting campaign. So please uh, apply. We do need additional police officers. We are a around 150 police officers short. If you think about that in terms of the six districts that we have, if we had 25 more police officers in every district, it could make a real difference. Uh, we have the money in the budget for that, and uh, so apply. It takes a few months. You have to have background checks. There's all kinds of uh, uh, vetting that goes on for people that are hired into the police department. We're graduating a new class of police officers. I think it's about 30 officers uh, in about three weeks, I think it is. It's in mid-March, and they've been in the academy for six months. Uh, running the police academy during this last year of COVID is challenging. Uh, but these folks are ready to graduate in, in March, and they'll be, uh, you know, become commissioned officers and get their badge at that time. It's a, it's one of my favorite things to do as mayor is to go to the police academy graduations. Um, it's like any graduation; everyone's very hopeful. Um, you know, parents and grandparents are proud, and uh, you know, it's it's a really it's a great day. So, <clears throat> uh, back to a new COVID question uh, from Joe. Asking if the state is going to expand the number of pharmacies in the city that's receiving vaccines, is it still only the three health marts? Uh, Joe, right now it is still only the three health marts, but we do expect, I mentioned this earlier, that, uh, C well, Walgreens is doing a limited number. They started last week, but CVS, we hope, will join them also and so that there are more opportunities to receive the vaccine at, at Walgreens and CVS. Um, on the public safety nightmare question about uh, an update, it's been a few months since the city uh, released the findings of the outside review of SLMPD, and if you mm -hmm. have an update on that. Hmm. Thank you. That's a, we get that question <clears throat> once in a while. So back in December, December 21st, right before Christmas, uh, Teneo completed their review of the St. Louis Police Department. Uh, and it was headed up by a gentleman that some of you know from, he's often on CNN or, you know, various national shows. Uh, his name is uh, Chief or Colonel Commissioner Chuck Ramsey. He's been a commissioner in many places. So they released this report, which is uh, a review of the city police department. It's got, it's long, it's lots of pages. I don't know how many. It's posted on our website, 40 some pages posted on our website <clears throat> making recommendations in terms of maybe how to organize and, and uh, different things that that they think would be helpful to the police department so 
Chief Hayden has taken this report extremely seriously. He's assigned a group of uh, senior officers as implementation, an implementation team. And in addition to that, we have asked, we did this about three weeks ago, four weeks ago, I guess. Uh, we, we wrote a letter asking for continued consulting from Teneo Group and Chuck Ramsey, Chief Ramsey, uh, as we go along the implementation of the recommendations in this report. And so we have asked for that assistance and when we are continuing to work with them. And you know, this report comes at no cost to the city of St. Louis and it's um, very, it's something that frankly to get an outside review by people of the caliber that, that worked on this report is, is a, uh, a real opportunity, I think, for, for us to, to make some changes and, and that sort of thing. So uh, the ability for, and we appreciate the uh, private sector who funded this, and the ability for us to continue to work with uh, the Teneo Group <clears throat> and Chuck Ramsey as we go through the implementation. So we appreciate that and, and uh, we're not gonna leave this report on the shelf, so to say. That is 2.30. It's 2.30, goodness. Um, so thank you all for being with us here this afternoon. Appreciate you. It's actually past 2.30, isn't it? So thank you all, appreciate it, and we will be back with you shortly. Thanks.